Hi guys, it is a gorgeous day here in the end times. Coming in to West Cliff, Colorado in my brand new, uh, new to me, gas sucking truck. Uh, coming into West Cliff, Colorado on Saturday morning, August 29th, 2015. And this is a little, I just finished up my last rant in front of this horse and buggy crossing sign. There's this Amish community that I'm passing through where these, I don't know if it's Amish or Mennonites, anyway, it's one of these, these groups who have somehow managed to survive as a, as a tribe, as it were, without succumbing to the allure, the addiction of the fossil fuel gas sucking truck. And anyway, just seeing uh, these signs reminded me of this humorous story which I meant to tell good lord a year ago and just never got around to it I just think it's a humorous story and while I'm driving down the road through West Cliff Colorado where all the one percenters are here looking at real estate today uh, I just wanted to share this story about your old uh, eco Nazi eco tourists meeting some Amish people on a Greyhound bus in Oregon last summer. Uh, I was on my way from uh, Eugene, Oregon to Crescent City, California last summer in the summer of uh, in the summer of 2014 and we changed the the Greyhound bus has one of these little one of these little uh, connector buses seats about I think it was like one of these little 16 seater buses the connector bus from Medford Oregon to uh, to Crescent City and the only ones on the bus were yours truly and these two Amish families on vacation. Uh, I was completely unaware that Amish people uh, ever left uh, Pennsylvania. I, I knew they took like a, a year off when they were 18 to decide whether they wanted to stick with being Amish or join the modern world. But past that, I thought that they always lived there in Pennsylvania so they could uh, you know tend their little GMO corn farms and to lease their land to frackers both of which Amish have no problem with GMOs and fracking but anyway uh, I was unaware that they got in gas sucking buses and stuff but anyway so what they did, these these, uh, these two Amish families, so they started out of Pennsylvania, and I guess they took that train across Canada. I guess, would that be a, would that be a, an Amtrak, the one that goes across, anyway, they came across Canada, got off in Seattle, and were greyhounding down uh, Seattle, then going over to Crescent City and, and taking the the coast route through the Redwoods down to San Francisco and whatnot and having a big summer vacation. That Amish families, just like any, anyone else, completely, without me realizing it somehow, uh, do take summer vacations like real people and they take them in gas sucking, uh, at least gas sucking Greyhound buses and gas sucking trains. I don't know whether they fly airplanes or not, but uh, they probably do for all I know. So anyway, so we're on there and, it, and it's 100 degrees. I mean, it is sweltering in Medford, Oregon uh, that day. It gets hot as hell in Medford, Oregon. People don't realize that Medford, Oregon is usually hotter than Austin, Texas. 
in the summer. It's, it's one of these triple digit days. And so we get on the bus and there is no air conditioning on this little feeder uh, Greyhound bus. No AC to be had. Uh, it was absolutely sweltering and uh, they had a bunch of kids with them because you better believe the, these Amish people uh, have no problem uh, breeding. Good Lord, I couldn't figure out which kids belong to which grown-ups. Anyway, there are a bunch of these kids, I mean, sweltering and complaining on the bus. So they were bitching and moaning about there being no AC on the bus. And uh, so the driver pulled into the, I guess that would have been the, the Grants Pass Greyhound stop which is just a whistle stop. They not normally people don't get off the bus, but she let them get off the bus so they could go get some ice cold coats out of the uh, out of the machine there at the Greyhound station in Grants Pass. There was this one problem is that the refrigeration in the coke machine was broken so their their soft drinks were not cold they were about the temperature of the bus and so these Amish people come back onto the sweltering bus with their hot cokes bitching and moaning about uh, about how their cokes uh, weren't cold and I was commenting you know I said guys you know it's gonna be hell when global industrial civilization collapses that it is not going to be pretty. Uh, there will be no air conditioning or cold to coax. Uh, well, I guess unless you, well, there won't be any coax, warm or cold. So anyway, so we get back on the sweltering bus and these Amish people start swigging their hot coax on the sweltering bus and feeding their kids these these bags of Cheetos, you know those bright orange little cheesy things that rub off on your fingers and one of the little yes he's probably about three years old was throwing a fit on the bus. You can't blame him. I mean it was a hundred degrees, it was miserable, he was tired. So his mother you know she's all dressed up in the little on the in the little Amis uniform, whatever those women wear. Uh, that, those little cotton sack dresses or whatever. So she opens her purse to find something in her <clears throat> in her bag to uh, soothe her little uh, her little kid's temper tantrum. Check this uh, beautiful old farm out. Here. This is the historic Beckwith Ranch. There you go. Pretty gorgeous. Anyway, so this Amish woman uh, is going through her purse trying to find something to calm down her little her little uh, three-year-old throwing the temper tantrum. And the first thing she produces is a little plastic sheep. You know those little those little plastic an farm animals. So she hands him this little plastic sheep to play with, and he takes one look at the damn little plastic sheep, and he and just I mean absolute fury in his eyes. He throws it across the bus and cranks up his temper tantrum. So she reaches back in her purse again and she pulls out a little plastic cow like the plastic sheep uh, didn't help any so she thought that she would uh, calm him down with the plastic cow instead well you can imagine the effect that had uh, as it went flying across the bus it only served to enrage him more so 
she digs deep down into her bag to pull out the, uh, the heavy artillery to calm down her temper tantrum spewing little Amish boy. And what she produces out of her purse is not a sheep or a cow, but it is a bright red little Ferrari Hot Wheels. You know, those little Hot Wheels, those little miniature cars. Same as this bright red sports car. I don't know if it was a Ferrari or not, guys. Probably was something like a Ferrari. And you should have seen this little Amish boy's eyes, I mean, light up when uh, Mama came through with the uh, with the little bright red Ferrari. I mean, a 180 degree difference in uh, in temperament. He completely forgot about the sweltering Greyhound bus in his hot coke because he had a bright red sports car in his three-year-old little Amish paws and he was one happy little camper. Zoom, zoom, zoom! I mean he was running that little Hot Wheels up and down <coughs> the aisles of the bus being a happy little slave. So what do you think guys, when this kid, uh, in about 16 years from now, when he heads out to spend his year in the real world of uh, gas sucking cars and whatnot, what do you think the chances are that one is coming back to his horse and buggy? I think you know damn well what the chances are. Uh, the chances are about as much as yours truly, your, your old eco-Nazi uh, trading in this gas-sucking truck for a horse and buggy. It ain't gonna happen because the addiction to fossil fuels is the number one addiction on planet Earth. This is the reason why, why your eco-Nazi fossil fuel addict understands that the situation is hopeless and this planet is doomed. So uh, since we are the last V8 generation, as the old Slade Cleave song says, last of the V8s. That is what our generation is, since we are the last generation to enjoy the our addiction to our gas-sucking cars. Your old eco-Nazi is gonna enjoy it. And with that rant, I am gonna close it up, get back to my tunes on my stereo and my gas-sucking truck, and get back to doing what I love doing more than anything else on the planet. My number one joy, about the only joy left in my wretched life since I pulled my head out of my ass and that is driving down the open road through gorgeous scenery trying not to hit the Harleys driving down the open road through gorgeous scenery listening to tunes in the end times for this rant. Bye guys.